Hello, welcome to In Moresby tonight. Great to have your company once again. How's it going, Jen? Doing well, Daryl. Good. good night. I like your flowers, by the way. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and good night, viewers. Good night, good night. Anyways, we've got a great show lined up for you last weekend. My very, very what long one. <laughs> Actually, too long. Too long. Very exciting. Yeah, very exciting to um, um, happy belated independence to PNG. Anyways, um, um, I had loads and loads of fun. I kickstarted on Friday, went yes, we all did. went all the way to Saturday. We had uh, had fun over at the Pacini Ovals, softball ovals that is for Madang Day, and of course the big one on Monday, Independence Celebrations, 38 years of uh, independence for Papua New Guinea. It was awesome. Loads and loads of people turned out at the University of Papua New Guinea here in Port Moresby. It was one of those hot spots where you could go and, uh, you know, celebrate with everyone. Also, apart from the university, you had uh, stuff happening down the beach. Ella oh, beach. Yes. Yep. We had some canoe racing and stuff like that happening. And also um, the famous Jack Pitty Park. Um, we had some live bands going totally off. And, yeah, um, and they've also got amazing flags up there. Yeah, I, I love how they did those uh, the provincial, provincial flags. flags. Yeah, and so here are a few highlights of the independent celebrations which started on Friday, Gordon Secondary School, and then Saturday, Madang Provincial Day, carrying on to Monday. Hope you enjoy that. Thanks for joining us on In Moresby tonight. How's it going? Very good, Daryl. Thank you very much. All right, now lots and lots of stuff happening um, in your world at the moment. But uh, let's bring things back a bit. Uh, let's start off with uh, you know introducing you to to the people that um, like the young kids that don't really know much about Burkata. Tell us who is Burkata and what what gets you ticking. Well, I've been a musician, and I'm a musician about 35 years. Um, I started at the National Art School. I tried to study music and that's where Sangoma came out. Unfortunately I failed. And uh, but that drove me even harder. And I started learning on my own outside. Um, learning. I didn't have a piano 
um, but I had to find a piano every time. I would go somewhere and find a piano and then start practicing. And I eventually ended up at Holiday Inn. But the, the National Art School prepared me for that. Most at the same time we were developing Sangoma. And so, and uh, Holiday Inn was the avenue, which was then the Islander Hotel. Uh, I started practicing and harnessing my skills. And then from there, it started, I realized I was a musician after that. I enjoyed it. I think, I guess, that, that drove me to heights beyond. Because when there's a passion in you, it'll drive you. Irrespective of no money, circumstances, you'll fight. You, you, you'll get to that level, yeah? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, um, you've been a mus musician for like 35 years plus. Your general view on, on, on the industry, um, take it from, you know, back in your day and the journey, how it's progressed through the years. I think we need to give credit when it's due to the music operators, Chin H Men, Pacific Gold, um, a lot of other studios. I think they've had a hand in helping <clears throat> in promote the music. Um, but all in fairness, there's also development on technology on the other side, yes? Mm -hmm which is moving very, very fast. And one of the, one of the things I'm really afraid of is, is people not having skills, because technology, people are easy to record, easy to just press the button. I'm not saying that's wrong, but I'm also saying that it's important for us to practice our instruments, yeah? So there's two, two stories, yeah? Now, 35 years is a long time in the industry. Yeah. What are some of the highlights that, like, the main highlights that, like, bring up the mind? Well, I think I started off with Sangoma and, of course, working with a lot of bands around. This, this place we're sitting down right now was the first hotel I played in years back. I was a bass, bass player there. So, um... And so I started my career at the Islander Hotel, which is Holiday Inn now. And I was a resident pianist there, and also a resident pianist at the Travel Lodge, which is now the Crown Plaza. And that's where I started harnessing my skills. Wait, were you um, at first a bass player before you went to piano, or? Oh, I was a bass player, but I think the need came when the piano played. I started to practice my piano, and I guess uh, I guess that's when I started coming up as a pianist. Because one of the I remember one of the first shows I did was the American Drifters. Um, I backed up the show at the Islander Hotel, which is now Holiday Inn, and I backed them up. Yeah, that was one of my first international shows I did, and uh, it was uh, very special, really special. Now, uh, with highlights in your career, you've probably met some. Uh, uh, pretty important people, some interesting people along the way as well? Interesting, important, weird. Weird. Um, <laughs> it, lo it all looks good being a musician or being up front, but behind the scenes there are a lot of things because to me, 95% of the time you hang around. 5% you get on stage and do interviews and other stuff. But 95, it's like you guys hanging around with your cameras and, <laughs> are you ready? You know, that kind of stuff. So I mean, it's that kind of business. Yeah we into, yeah? True. All right, now um, to, to the more, to the present day at the moment, um, one, of, one of your current projects that you've been part of uh, um, is working with the Shepherd Kids and the Shepherd Band. Um, they've recently, um, uh, you know, done really well in, in Australia. They're probably the most hottest uh, independent or unsigned group going around Australia at the moment since Pearl Jam. I, I watched a couple of uh, interviews uh, uh, a few months back. Yeah. Um, tell us about uh, working with the Shepherd Band personally for you. Well, I think the Shepherd is very special to me in my heart and my family. I taught Emma, George and Amy at the Elmar International School. They. Um, they had to move down south to do boarding school down there. Mm -hmm. One day, uh, Mr. Shepherd rang me up and said, uh, listen, can we do some work with uh, 
the George, Emma, and Amy. And I said, Greg, you're better off taking somebody down in Australia. And uh, Greg was Adam that I was a person, right person to work with. And the kids, they went all out for me. That's how Shepherd started. I flew into Brisbane one time. Just started working on a few ideas on a song and one idea came up and another idea came up and stock started forming. They were doing the hard yards. All I was doing was just facilitating, inspiring them. And they delivered. Wow. And so it's a, uh, I'll give them credit, I really do. I mean, I, I'm, like anything else, you know, when you become a mentor, you just inspire people to grow. And that's what happened. working with them, um, yourself and Shepard have, have hit a, a milestone. Um, you've recently received a Platinum Award, um, an ARIA Platinum Award. Uh, would you like to tell us about that? You must be stoked. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a... Uh, when we got a Platinum, I, uh, I spoke to Greg on the phone. It was just me on and Michael Chug. Um, would all of us, would, you know, in our own ways, just over the moon. Michael Chug is one of the biggest promoters in the world, Chug Entertainment is, which Shepherds go under. And of course, Mr. Shepherd owns the Empire record label. That's, yeah, that's his own. Yeah, so, so to me, as a, as a mentor and musical director, I mean, I am over the moon. I mean, to get something like this here, I mean, that's, I, 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 I'm speechless. Now that's great news. Um, tell us about uh, when you were working with your, your uni, you recently performed the tribute, uh, in the tribute concert. Tell us about your experiences. Oh, I tell you what, flying back into Darwin this time to do the tribute concert, I was, um, I was happy, I was sad, solid emotion. Because we lost a very dear friend and a brother, uh, Dr. Yunupingu. Of course, he was Australian of the year too. Uh, when we rehearsal at the university in um, Darwin, well, that rehearsal room was on fire. You could literally feel the emotion. It was like electrifying. To me, the rehearsals were more powerful than the actual performance. The uh, final song during the tribute concert uh, was Treaty. Mm -hmm. There was a whole heap of people on stage. <laughs> How, what was that like for you? Oh, it was incredible. I mean, they, we had all, all sorts of, like um, Archie Roach, Katja Edwards, a lot of artists come and join us. And he, of course, you had the younger people. You, you had little kids come up on stage. That was deadly. My fingers were just walking all over the keyboard. I mean, I just, it was just so fluid, you know what I mean? Because I felt so... It was one of the last times, I, I think, I was performing as Yossi Indy. But you know what happened? The manager, we met, met Peter Garrett, and Peter Garrett's a lead singer for Midnight Oil. Peter was the MC. That night? Yeah, he was the MC that night. I was just really awesome feeling. I mean, I just wish our people witnessed that. You know, it's an emotion I can't explain. But just uh, being there in the life field was very powerful. There was um, Ben Hakalitz was on drums and uh, Ira Ingram. Good evening once again, viewers, and welcome to another telecom segment on In Mosby tonight. Hello, Bernard. Hi, long time. Yes, hello. How are you? I'm good. I'm How good. was your independent celebration? I was really good. Yeah, I was around Port oh, Mosby. No wonder you went missing for yeah. like three days. I know. I shaved my 
Small scrap. You can it looks see. like a PNG. If yeah, it's the, it's the map, map of Papua New Guinea. Okay. Yes, you Where's see. your province? It's some. No, it's not there. Oh, right. Anyways. <laughs> anyway, we have loads to talk to you about tonight on the, um, the telecom segment. So, mm -hmm. Bernard, what are we talking about? So, we got the dongle plus we have the, the modem. Oh, yeah, the internet the modem. modem. So, mm -hmm. but first. Oh, this phone. yeah, so you yeah. finally got yourself We've one We've been phone. going on Great. and on about it. It's the ZTE A908. It's really good. As you, you can see, yeah, my face, it's on the phone. Oh, well, we it's cannot see energy. anything? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, you can... What features does it have? Oh, uh, it's really good. You can go to the internet. Mm -hmm. Plus, the camera, it's really, really good, like, really clear. Okay. If I take your photo now... Uh-huh. I don't want to go on and on and on about it, but hey, and also uh, if you, you can buy yourself this one and you can get free call, free text and free internet bundle just by texting to 1251. Okay, mm. a very smart phone. Yeah, smarter than you. Uh, okay, yeah. well, we also have the um, 79 Kinder dongle that's, that's really affordable mm. and it's going for 79 only. It, the dongle itself has a uh, plug, it's a plug, and, yes, play. plug, plug and, play and play dongle. And it has a lot of loads installed and it mm -hmm. uh, has SMS, voice services and a phone book as well and much, much more. All you have to do is just purchase yourself one and check it out. Yeah, so that's really good. So make sure you buy yourself one phone and a dongle. Yes. I told you last time, my birthday was last week, but... I bought you the phone. I bought something too. <laughs> anyway, so if you have any queries about any products, yeah, all you have to do is call the customer service. Yes, that's 24 hotline. Uh, hotline. And that's, do you want me to call it or you call I it? I think I should call it. Shafi, go ahead. Okay, it's three, four, five, four, six, seven, eight, nine. How could you forget? Yeah. Easy number to remember. Hmm. Again, please. One more time. Yes. Yeah. Three, four, five, four, six, seven. And welcome back to the show. Time has caught up with us and it's time for us to go. Yeah, obviously, Daryl's getting excited with his game right there, but something to look forward to in the next segment. We're going to be going up to Hula, the yep. central province. So right after this, we're totally driving up here. We're excited. So I can't wait. Really excited. I've never been up there. Um, it's going to be my first uh, trip up to Hula. Um, it's going to be awesome. Massive, Definitely massive. Gonna be fun. We're going to be having uh, a lot of fun with the kids up there. I hear a little bit of you telling me that um, they've been doing uh, uh, some sailing up there. Um, not, not with yes, big boats and whatnot. They have little model boats and um, they've been doing a lot of sailing and stuff. So uh, we'll be joining them next, sorry, tomorrow at the beach. Uh, so you can watch that next week. Definitely. Friday. Anyways, um, uh, if you've got any entertainment stories you'd like us to cover, yep. Uh, send us an email at imt at emtv.com.tv. Yep. And also, if you weren't able to watch any of our um, episodes before or have missed this episode, you can also catch that on our Facebook page, which is in more than tonight on Facebook. So like the page and go on and watch all the, all the episodes that you missed. Like the page. Like the page. Definitely like the page. Thumbs up to the people who have. Thank you very much. Yep. Anyways, have a top weekend. Yes, yeah, a top weekend and a great week. And we look forward to seeing you all next Friday. Yeah, go Bye the Rabbitohs! <laughs> the Rabbitohs, yay!